City to Guam. Hey friends, David, your traveling tutor. Thank you for joining me. And I just want to let you know that the next set of videos are going to be coming to you from the island of Guam. Why Guam, you might ask? Uh, you're in the Philippines. Well, there's several reasons that I want to travel to Guam. And the first one is I'm a former sailor in the Navy for many years. So I want to see what the Navy base looks like, how it's changed. I'm just interested to see the island. And also the closest Veterans Administration healthcare system. Well, there's one in the Philippines, but the best one and the one that's the closest is on the island of Guam. So I'll be heading there for a medical checkups and to have some lab work and stuff done there. Also, there's a lot of history on the island of Guam. I've heard that it's very beautiful there. You know, the Philippines is, is gorgeous as well. So I want to go and check that out. It's going to be over the 4th of July. So I think there will be a lot of things going on. Celebrations for Independence Day for the U.S. And there's a lot of historical sites and significance on the island of Guam, especially from World War II. So well, I hope you'll join me and enjoy the next set of videos about the island of Guam. Let's go. Guam is in the Mariana Islands in Micronesia. Interestingly enough, around 800 AD, it was settled by Indonesian Filipino people. Ferdinand Magellan probably landed on Guam in 1521, but Spain officially claimed the island in 1565, but didn't attempt to conquer it until the 17th century. Guam remained in Spanish possession until 1898, when in the course of the Spanish-American War, the U.S. warship Charleston came into Apra Harbor and bombarded the old fort. Guam was ceded to the United States, and Spain sold other islands to different countries. Guam remained in Spanish possession until 1898, when during the Spanish-American War, the U.S. warship Charleston steamed into Apra Harbor and bombarded the old fort. It then became part of the United States until Spain sold other islands in the Marianas to Germany. During World War II, the Japanese landed on Guam just after the Pearl Harbor attack occupied the island. Allied forces retook Guam in August of 1944. It was a brutal period for the Chamorro people who suffered for 31 bitter months under the domination of the Japanese army. Guam remains the site of major U.S. naval and air bases. Interestingly, about one third of the island of Guam is owned by the U.S. armed forces. Well, hey friends, I'm in Guam. And one of the first stops that I wanted to make was at Two Lovers Point. And uh, I'll tell you about the legend once we get to a sign. Basically, two lovers were forced into a marriage that they didn't want to. So instead of getting married, they decided to throw themselves over the cliff. Happy ending. <laughs> This is a fantastic view of the coast, the west coast of Guam. I'm staying further down in that area, Timon Bay. Staying at the Hilton there. This is a beautiful view. I'm gonna head up these steps though and check it out. And what happens is uh, lovers will get locks and put a message on that and lock that up on this wall here. This is one of them. I have a message and you lock it up forever. On the island of Guam, 
the Chamorro people have a word. It's a greeting. It's pronounced half a day. And it sounds like half a day when you say it. But it's a greeting that means hi or hello. Yeah, friends, just like I was saying, this is the legend of two lovers. Uh, in ancient times, a beautiful maiden, the eldest daughter, was ordered by her father to wed a Spanish army captain. But apparently she had another love. And uh, let's see, I'm kind of reading through it here. Holding hands, they fearlessly walked to the edge of the cliff and gazed down to their destiny. The soldiers appeared breathless, but too late. Soft moonlight caressed the lover's journey into eternity as they leapt to their fate. Now they would be together forever. To this day, there are those who claim to have heard the whispers of the two lovers upon the waves proclaiming their undying love. So this is the Hartlock story. The legend of the two young lovers radiates the powerful spirit of eternal love at two lovers' points. To this day, couples, friends, and families believe that locking their inscribed names and short messages will bring everlasting love, happiness, and good fortune. You can see this in the many colorful hearts that are bound along the walls throughout the park. Okay, and you can see the two lovers created in brass statues, bronze statues for eternity. Today's video focuses on the most famous visitor attraction in Guam, Two Lovers Point. It's visited by more people than any other place in Guam. Its profile at the northern end of Timon Bay rises almost 400 feet from the reef below, offering views of both the eastern and western sides of the island. Okay, you pay at the, uh, there's a fee to go in. It's about $3 per person. If you want to visit Two Lovers Point, it's open daily from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can walk around the park and look at it basically for free. But if you want to go up on the balcony area, it will cost $3 per person. Children six and under are free. They also sell souvenirs and gifts and a lot of different tourist items there. This is the overlook of Two Lovers Point. This is way up, up, up. <laughs> I didn't realize how high this is. Oh no! Wow, look at that. Is it kind of a ways up? <laughs> I, can, I can see where the two lovers wouldn't make it. They threw themselves off the edge. Yeah, look at how beautiful that water is. I don't know, it's gotta be about 300 feet. And it looks like it's low tide right now. But oh my goodness, wow. Like Philippine Airlines. I think this is the point of Two Lovers Point. <laughs> it's got to be the final point. Yeah, I'd say about 400 feet down.
to Lover's Point and uh, Guam, not too far from the airport, maybe about a five minute drive. But I was like, well, I don't want to pay $3 to go up to this double platform, but gosh, it's worth it to come up here and get pictures and, and this view is amazing. Look at this, guys. It's just incredible. Seems like you can see for 40, 50 miles off in the distance. Well, the curvature of the earth isn't going to allow that, but we're up pretty high, so I don't know. Could be possible. But this is the tippy top point of Lover's Point. Man, it's got to be 400 feet up in the air. Incredible view. Definitely worth the $3 per person to come up here. Uh, if you're military, you get a dollar off. <laughs> Look at that. Thank you. It was a very nice, uh, well worth three dollars per person. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. So what is this? Oh. Ooh. Oh my. Oh my. Look at how far that goes down. Oh, it's like a crack in the ground. Oh my lord. Guys, I can't, can't even see the bottom of that. So look for the sign on Marine Corps Drive to come to Two Lovers Point. You'll see street signs, but when you come into the park, you'll actually see this sign right here. And free parking. Definitely recommend coming here. It's a great attraction. Off in the distance, you can see Two Lovers Point, and uh, this is the beach, the place we're staying at, the Hilton. Looks like the tide is, I don't know if it's down, or I'm not sure. My favorite flower. What is this, friends? Do you know what type of uh, tree or what kind of fruit this is on this tree? I have no clue what kind of tree this is. It's a cotton candy. Billy says it's cotton candy. Like Comment and let me know if you know what type of tree this is. Thank you.